Yo, what is good, my anime people? What is good, yo? So, Baki is a thing now. <laughs> um, Baki this week, man. I I'm absolutely like a a huge fan of Martin Lu- uh Martin Luther, uh, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> And to see Muhammad Ali in this anime and being treated, like, respectably, because, I mean, come on now, this is anime, and, like, a lot of things in anime would never make sense, but at the same time, they went out of their way to seemingly make a person who, um, you know, the world supposedly knows everything about, and they wanted to make him mysterious, like, they wanted to make him feel like someone that you might not have known or at least some things you might not know about him because they did use verbatim like things in his history like spot on so it was really cool just to see uh how much knowledge or what was the inspiring point of muhammad ali to the creator of this manga because this this manga is very very old if i if i remember correctly like it's close to around when Dragon Ball and, like, Yu Yu Hakusho and stuff came out, you know, like, around that era of, like, actual, um, you know, like, when the creator actually did it, and, oh, I'm about to actually die, wow, um, but with all that being said, there was so much that they could have easily written in there, you know, like, oh, Muhammad's the best ever, and then, you know, just had him lose completely easily, you know, or something stupid like that, but no, they actually made him, made a, you know, person who's being treated as the strongest of all times in the whole entire planet, they made him, you know, at least respect and understand the talent that comes with Muhammad Ali so much to a point where he respected him. Um, it's just that he was stronger than Muhammad Ali. So for Muhammad Ali, it was like, it was like a joke to him that this guy is saying, oh, yeah, you're you're better than me, or I, I like, you know, I like everything you've done and this and this. Because to Muhammad Ali, he just lost, you know. He literally was, his teammates that were training with him, that, that one of them that became one of the, like, champions and everything, uh, all of them were just getting picked off without a sound, without him even noticing. So that just goes to show you how quick and how deadly the monster really is when it comes down to doing something he actually wants to do like if he if he's going at you full speed full like head of steam to get you you have no chance and um this fight that we even see he doesn't even really try to actively attack uh it was more like he wanted to test his defense against some of the best offense in boxing and I thought that was an awesome way to pay homage to the skill that Martin, or God, why do I keep saying Martin, um, that Muhammad Ali actually showcases. And then not only that, they go to show you that, um, you know, Muhammad Ali, or yeah, Muhammad Ali didn't really care for defense. His his fighting style was to like leave himself open and you know dance around, float like a butterfly and stuff like that. So. As soon as he runs into this man, the first thing he does is put up his guard, put up all of his, you know, put himself up to wherever he needs to be to be able to straight up block and defend himself against this man. And that is like unheard of uh, for his character, like for Muhammad Ali's character, uh, just by the way he boxes and just by the way he fought and stuff throughout the ring. Um it was funny because all of these things that he's saying or all the things that he's pretty much doing and showing us, he then verbatim, like, you know, does it. And not only did the monster know about all this stuff, he knew when Muhammad Ali was trying, when Muhammad Ali uh, wasn't trying, you know, putting his guard down and stuff like that. And then he also knew when uh, he created the rope of dope when he was just being pushed back, his footwork was starting to disappear. Uh, he started getting pushed back, and what did he do? He started to use the rope as, like, his, um, you know, as his back uh, to just know that no one, 
you know, he was in a spot where no one could get to him besides right in front of him, and he wasn't going to be able to get around him, none of that stuff. So it was really cool just to see their interpretation of how the rope dope was created, how uh, Muhammad Ali's fighting style is portrayed. Like, they got to portray it in a way that they wanted to. Uh, absolutely nuts and, like, quick, so quick. Um I just I just love that aspect of like storytelling. If you can take a story or you can take a real person in the world and spin them a way that you wanted to, like what would you do? And this is this man's Muhammad Ali and he's super broken and still lost to this other retardedly broken character, which is awesome cuz it's just this is an actual way of power leveling. Uh like we have the best boxer of all times, supposedly, and this guy is pretty much dancing around his punches that are moving so quick, you know, like certain things are getting picked up while he's throwing a punch, like a win and stuff like that. Um, so to think that he's casually dodging that stuff, and then not only did he casually dodge it, he didn't throw like any normal means of punches or kicks or grapples. He threw one grab attack after he already pretended to fall on the... Well, he didn't pretend. He dodged a punch by just falling completely flat on his own back. Um, it kind of shows you the respect he had for the attack in general. Because I think if he would have just stood there and tried to dodge, it would have been easier for him to then... Or Muhammad Ali to then follow up with something to land. But by falling completely to the ground, it took Muhammad Ali out of his, like, right state of mind of seeing him dodge. And then not only that, the grab came literally right after he went to the ground, grabs him by his leg and flips him like he's a little kid, and then catches him by his hand and saves him, man. Like, that was so hype. And just seeing their auras or, like, just seeing their poses with all the art and like, stuff that's built up around them looks so fire. Um, we then get to see the reasoning why probably uh, Muhammad Ali Jr. is actually with the monster at this point. Because even as a little kid, uh, he met this monster and got flicked in the forehead and started to bleed. But it was <laughs> it was definitely, like, his fault. He ran up on the monster and just started bust, like, just boxing him, hitting his knees, hitting his arms. And then the monster literally crouches down so his face is in the line of getting punched, starts taking, like, three of those hits, slowly charges up a flicking motion, and just blasts that kid all the way to the back wall. <laughs> um, so I wonder if not only he wants to get revenge for, like, that guy flicking him in the forehead and literally making him bleed or if this is more of a uh like he was the only reason why my son you know or you know like he's the only reason why my father was acting certain ways after a while you know and kind of looked down on himself i don't know i i can't really tell what the junior yet and that's another cool part about the show is we really didn't even see where that's going in this week's episode because they were dealing with so much um because then when we get out of just talking about those characters we go into baki and just how sick and like his body is slowly uh degrading on him so we are in a situation where not only is the dad getting in something that's pretty hype but baki is make trying to make a full recovery from just fighting the poison guy the same guy that the dad didn't even allow to get up and touch him because i'm guessing he even he oh or i think the dad was just mad at the fact that knowing that the way that he fights if baki did fight him and took any damage from him he would be probably messed up and for a man who can sneak in on his son while he's with a woman and kind of make no sounds at all to be like detected and stuff like that i'm pretty sure he could have easily seen uh just what happened to baki's body already if not he's already heard just like everybody else uh in the underground tournaments already heard because word gets around so quickly uh for these strong people who have power 
that it wouldn't make any sense that the father wouldn't know and it would make a lot more sense that that's why he came in and interrupted a whole entire fight and pretty much busted a guy's face wide open for seemingly no reason in my opinion when we see it but then when you think about Baki and just what that guy did to him it all makes sense that he would be you know he he lost to Baki but he still somehow gets almost a win because he uses poison and stuff like that would be that would make me mad <laughs> uh, if I was someone that like looked after Baki and stuff like you beat this guy fair and square and because you took any significant damage from him you're suffering from it come on bruh so I could not only imagine what, how his father would feel so that that's kind of my way of looking at uh, that whole situation of him destroying that guy just literally hitting him so hard ripping his jaw off and I think that's also very good indications of making people understand that he hit by just like the monster doing that by finally throwing almost a semi real punch uh, seemingly or maybe it was the most realest punch and I'm you know we just don't know because no one's actually seen uh, we never seen anybody take a punch from him and then walk away so a, a normal regular punch could do that type of damage because we don't know what a serious one does yet um for sure we don't know for certain if that was a serious all, all out punch so i'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say it wasn't um cuz i mean the guy was already practically defeated I mean, sure, he doesn't like to show mercy on the battlefield and probably would go all out. But I also feel like he's a cocky guy and he wouldn't want to show his full strength to everybody else around him that was there watching this. So literally, this is just uh, an arc or like a mini, mini episodes of why the monster is so freaking broken and he looked even dope as a, like, he looks kind of the same, but way more sinister now. But when he was younger, man, with that hair tied up, he looked like a beast, bro. That man is scary. So I can't wait to see what you guys are uh, feeling on this show, though. It's been it's been quite a mile of this show. Like, there's so much that's happened. Baki just introduced us to a giant ape that his dad killed the whole family of. And supposedly that's someone else that Baki is going to avenge and trying to get, um, you know, try to defeat his dad for this great ape, which is another reason why I kind of hate the show's starting point, because we honestly, if you are just watching this anime, you have no idea what they're even talking about. We don't know anything about a beast. You know, we don't know about him meeting this beast and all this different stuff. But because the anime started where it is. They kind of just have to squeeze all that in, even if it doesn't make sense. And that's the messed up thing about making these interpretations of animes and stuff like that. They usually don't come out that good uh, when you skip things that might help the story uh, feel more realistic. But I digress. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. I don't know if I'm going to be doing a Borinto, uh one yet. But if I do, you guys will be instantly notified if you guys have that subscribe button on. So with that, everybody, make sure you are ready for any content I drop. I'll definitely be dropping some Monday. So subscribe for that. And if you guys did enjoy, a like would be greatly appreciated. And thank you so much for all the support. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.